appreciate them and Sister Paige. If you have your Bible and want to read with us, we're going to be reading out of the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, beginning with verse 36. Hebrews, chapter number 10, beginning with verse number 36. Hebrews 10 and 36 reads like this, For you have eaten, for you have done of God, might receive the peace. For yet while he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back under perdition, but of them that leave to the saving of the soul. Amen. I want to preach and just a very simple message this morning, but one that I couldn't escape in prayer. It just seems it's all God had me praying about. He laid this mess upon my heart. Don't quit. Don't quit. He said in verse 38, The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Don't quit. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. I pray that you'll anoint us to preach what you've laid upon our heart for this service. You'll speak to us, O oh God, as you already have by your spirit, but I pray you'll speak to us through your word. O oh God, that your word will just settle in our hearts, that we won't let it slip. And I pray, O oh God, that you'll touch us around the altar today as we gather in your name to seek your face. You know every need in this house. Maybe somebody's here, oh God, with a longing in their heart and soul to be born again. I pray you'll show yourself to be a savior, oh God. Lord, I know somebody's here, no doubt, needing healing in their body. And with your stripes, we are healed. And I pray that you'll manifest your healing power in this house today for those that need your healing touch. And I pray, oh God, we'll all be filled and refilled with the power of your precious spirit. We ask it together in Christ's name. If you love the Lord, would you say amen? Amen. I've gotten a kick out of uh, kind of all week long thinking about our message on Wednesday night. I preached on uh, living in the spirit, but our verse was uh, this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I talked about the word walk in the Greek was peripateo. And Brother Daniel said, sound to him like pair of potatoes. <laughs> he said, I've been he said, I've been practicing on them pair of potatoes all week long. And so I I got a kick out of that and I thought if I don't remember anything else from that from that message it'll be pair of potatoes. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, I love doing word studies. It's just who I am. When I read the Bible, the Bible says study. To show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I like to just dig in and study and then run cross-references and find, you know, examples in the Bible that, that emphasize the verse that uh, God's laid upon your heart. And in speaking this morning, out of verse number 38, I'll read it again. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The words draw back are one word in the Greek, hupostello, and it means shrinking back, retreating, regressing, backing away, or recoiling from something. It's a picture of a person who's going backwards instead of forwards. You ever seen somebody be hit uh, not necessarily by a person, but being a baseball coach, I've watched players get hit with a, with a ball in the batter's box. And they recoil. The next time they get in the box, they're standing about a foot further away from the plate. And every time there's a pitch on the inside, they're, they're drawing back. And instead of looking to get a hit, they're looking not to get hit. And then I've watched kids in the field on a ground ball, a ball take a bad hop and 
hit them right in the mouth. They recoil back, and the next time a ground ball comes their way, they they turn and look the other way, and it goes under their glove into the into the outfield. You you teach them you you can't be you can't play afraid. You can't be scared. You you still gotta fundamentally you know come up and get in front of the ball and, and, and do what you do, what you know to do is the right way to play the game. This word is much sim similar to that. Something has caused this person to shrink back. Instead of going forward, they're now retreating. Instead of progressing, they are regressing. Instead of standing, they're backing away. They are recoiling every time they see trouble coming their way, they're shrinking back. They're dodging, they're running for cover. And you can't live your life for God in that manner. That's right. You can't live your life afraid. Do you know that in one of the things in Revelation that were, were, were mentioned in a long list of people that were without the city? The fearful yeah. un and the unbelieving yes, right. are, are categorized. You can't live for God and be fearful no, of what's coming. No. Well, I'm afraid. I, I've heard people come to the altar and pray, Oh, God, I just can't live it. I just can't do it. I'm afraid that if I pray and ask you to save me or ask you to work in my heart this morning that I'm going to fail again like I have. So many times. That, that's what this word is talking about. We are not of them that draw back. Shrink back. Recoil. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Then he tells us what they draw back unto. We're not of them who draw back unto perdition. If we're living in fear and if we're always recoiling, if we're drawing back, if we're going backwards instead of forward, here's the trouble with it. It's the Greek word apoleia, and it means something so ruined and rotten that, is, that it is decomposing. If I'm going backwards spiritually, I'm in a bad state. It was the word that the Greeks used to describe the stench of a decaying animal or a dead human body. Our, uh, the day of, it was the Saturday or the Friday rather of Caleb's wedding. There was a thunderstorm rolled through that day. Most of you seen Kim's post on, on Facebook. It flipped that uh, thunder or lightning or whatever, flipped that GFI. Who along with me hates GFI plug-in? I hate them. You say, why? Because every thunderstorm, which is every other day during the summer, they get flipped. And if you're not at home or if you're busy and don't think about it, you got a freezer plugged in to the garage, and you're ruined. <laughs> and we had one roll through, and uh, Glenn had changed the one at the house out for me years ago for the very same <laughs> Very same reason. We lost stuff in the freezer a few times. Just took the GFI out, put a normal plug in. In well, the house that we're renting's got one in the garage. And sure enough, about three days later, uh, after that, we went out and there was blood draining all out the bottom of it, down into the into the concrete floor of the of the uh, garage, and you didn't have to wonder had had it gone bad. It was awful. There's nothing that stinks worse than blood. Yeah. Whether it be that of an animal or a, a human, when blood begins to break down and decompose, it is the foulest, most rotten and stinking odor. It has been a week and two days since <coughs> that wonderful occurrence in the garage and I've still got the garage door open about that far because it reeks in the garage. That blood gets down in the pores of that concrete and it still 
reeks. I mean, we we cleaned it. We poured uh, peroxide in it to try to boil the blood out. It just stinks. And the word perdition is that word. Yeah. It's that foul stench, that rotting. When we draw back, when we're going backwards, God said it stinks like death. Yeah. If we're going in the wrong direction, it puts off a nauseating scent to God. One whiff leaves you with a sick feeling, makes you want to run to the bathroom to puke. It's that foul. A person going backwards on God is a very stinking and a sickening scenario we're talking about spiritually. I, I was praying over this, and if I could walk into the sanctuary and I was truly in tune with God, and if I had his heart, and God knows all hearts, I don't. But if there was somebody this morning that were going backwards, it would almost be like what my garage smells like. God could detect it. God could smell it. It would put off a, a, a foul odor. And immediately, I believe, conviction would settle in on that heart that you're going the wrong way. If someone's prayers for healing don't get answered, the attitude of those who are drawing back would be, God doesn't heal. Or, he just wants me to suffer. Aren't they so financially into the kingdom and they expect to see a return that doesn't soon come? Then God's promises concerning his faithfulness and his blessings are no longer true. You see what that is? That's recoiling. That's, it didn't, I didn't get the result that I wanted and they draw back. No. It's not supposed to happen that way. Sometimes life just hits you in the mouth. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes when you, make, when you take a step of faith and you punch the devil in the mouth, he punches back. You're in a battle. You're in a war. If God be for us, who can be against us? I'll tell you the one who is, Satan. He's already defeated but he's still in the game. Amen. We have to give faith time to work. Faith and patience are partners in Scripture. That's why I included verse 36 in with our text. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Isn't it something that right after Paul I believe Paul's a writer of Hebrews. Right after he makes this statement in verse 36, you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, after you know you've done what God would have had you to do, you have need of patience that you might receive the promise. In other words, there's a space of time between you doing what God told you to do and you receiving what you think God has promised you. It doesn't come always immediately, right. instantaneously, right then. That's right. God doesn't wave the wand and say, there it is. The word says, there it is. That's right. And you just believe that and stand on that until you possess it. Faith the is the substance of things hoped for and it's the evidence of things not seen. In other words, uh, it's there. You just need patience right. to hold on to it even though you can't see it. Uh, there's substance to the promise. Yeah. The substance uh, makes the promise real or reality even though it's not in my hands. Uh, I know God made the promise uh, and I can stand on his word and I can believe him for it. Yeah. You have need of patience after you've done the will of God that you might 
receive the promise. And the word patience is hupomeno, and it's a compound word. Meno means to stay, to remain, to continue, to permanently abide in one place. And you find that word in John 15 and 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you can ask me whatever you want to, and it'll be given unto you. That's a powerful promise. And the word that it's coupled with, hupo, means under. It pictures a person who's under a very heavy load, but who is resolved and determined that he will not move. He's going to stay in that one place regardless of how heavy the load or how long it takes. He refuses to move from where God has placed him. He remains until victory comes. That's what patience means. Though the load is heavy, though the way is hard or difficult or narrow, I'm staying in this way. I will not be moved. I'm staying where God has placed me, no matter the hardship, no matter the difficulty, God said, this is what you need in your life if you are going to receive the promises of God. Quitters don't experience victory. People who give up never inherit the promise. Did you know, even if you've prayed for something for 10 years, I know parents uh, that have prayed for their children to be born again, and they died but without seeing them born again, uh, and after they are dead and buried, uh, their children would later come to God and be saved. Uh, do you know that they died in the faith not having received the promise. Uh, but don't you know when the trump of God sounds uh, or when that loved one in Christ dies uh, and is reunited with them in heaven, don't you know it's going to be a sweet thing uh, for them to rejoice? Uh, I'm telling you, while eternity rolls on, we're going to praise God uh, that he's faithful that he never broke his promise, uh, that he never backed away from his word. We're going to praise God forever for his word. Yeah. The very fact that we're born again, that we're in the city whose builder and maker is God. We're going to praise him for his mercy and his grace. Uh, praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever. We're just going to rejoice always uh, that God's word cannot fail and that God always keeps his promises. Amen. We have need of patience. This determination that whatever comes my way, I won't be moved from the will of God. You must have hupomene, which is patience if you intend to beat or to defeat the devil. If patience is working in your life, then it's only a matter of time before victory comes. It's not a question of if victory will come, only when. I, I was thinking as I was preparing for the message, if you would have told me 20 years ago when we were starting the work here at Bible Way, well, you're 20 years from now, this is where you're going to be. I, I would have thought, man, that, that, it's going to take way longer than what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it to take that long, God. It's going to take way longer than what I thought. But if you would have told me 20 years ago that it's going to take this long, it would have encouraged me to just stay in the race yeah. until God does what he promised you he's going to do. Right. Some things don't happen overnight. We have a very ADHD spirituality yeah. programmed into us through the world. About five minutes is what our attention span is. and Man, we're on to something else. If something don't come instantaneously to give us that instant gratification. We lose our patience with that and we're on to something else. Yeah. That's the way the world has programmed us to be. I was thinking, 
How, what, has, what did God save me from? I, when, when we started the church, I could remember being under the, you start from nothing, you got two things, no people and no money. When you start from nothing, you've got a, a note, and you've got pressure, and I, I've, I've often told the story, Sister Barbara Williams sitting in the back, and church was over one day, and she said, Brother Eddie, she said, are you sure we're in the will of God starting this church? And I said, well, yeah, I'm sure. What makes you ask? And I, I picked her up and carried her home, so she always had to wait on me. I said, what makes you ask? And she said, only two only two reasons. We got no people and we got no money. I said, man, those are two great reasons to wonder or to ask if we're really in the will of God. And But I, I look back and there was one main reason, you know, calls would come. So, you know, we just feel, we just feel led of the Lord to to. To ask you or to invite you to come, we want you to be our pastor. We're going to give you this as a salary. We've got this much in the bank. We run this many on Sunday. And, and we, we're just looking for somebody like you, and you're the man. We want you to come. Do you know one of the things that was always in the forefront of my mind? There's no way. There's no way that's the will of God for me to start a church and leave it heaped up in debt and an unfinished work. God finishes what he started. I haven't received the promise. I haven't seen God do what he told me when he put me here that he wanted to do. God can't leave that incomplete. God won't leave that incomplete in my life. They say, well, well, well come and feel it out. Just come and preach for us on Sunday and feel it out and see if you like it and God might change your mind. I said, why would I want to change God's mind? God's spoken to me and I don't feel like toying with that. If, if I haven't received the promise, I, I want to stay. I want to tell you, just me refusing to leave before something was done or finished to save me from a lot of heartache. Yes. You want to know why God didn't allow a millionaire to come in here in year one and say, oh, y'all, is that all y'all owe on this building? Let me write you a check. It, was, it could have been done. And that would have been awesome. But if I hadn't, if I, if God's will for me was to pastor this church and be here 20 years later, God had to leave some things undone yeah. so that when things come along in life, I wouldn't just tuck tail and run. Sometimes God wants you to stay. Woo! Sometimes God wants you to stay. How many people have I seen life hit them in the mouth and they just want to change a venue? Yeah, that's right. Problem comes up on the job. You know what the Brother Homer knows because he's worked construction his whole life. What do they do, Brother Homer? They drag up. <laughs> you know what that means? I quit. No notice. Without warning, I'm tired of this. I'm getting my tools and going home. You don't get very far in life if every time life hits you in the mouth, you drag up. It's the people that stay, that stick it out. Hey, I gave somebody my word that I would do the job and I'll be here to see this job completed. There's reward in staying, in seeing the completion there's a reward of getting what God promised to give you. Remember Lot's wife in the Bible. The Bible, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife in speaking to his disciples. You know what he was saying to his disciples? I know that you are excited right now. I know that everything's going your way. There's going to come a day when all the world's going to be against you. 
Every devil in hell is going to be summoned to your doorstep uh, and beat upon your brow. The weight of the world is going to come against you, your family, and your ministry. I want you to remember something when it does. Remember Lot's wife. Don't ever look back. There's no going back. No looking back. He that puts his hand to the plow and looks back, the Bible said, is not fit for the kingdom. There's something God is saying here that if there is something in you that will draw back or go back, uh, then don't expect to ever receive the promises of God. The Bible said that Judas drew back under perdition. The Bible calls or coins Judas as the son of perdition. When you say the name Judas, the foul Stench, the reeking, horrible odor that's in my garage flies up into heaven. If you say the name Judas in heaven, there's a foul stench of an aroma of a man who went back uh, on the Son of God. When you say the name Demas, you were talking to the Apostle Paul and you were to say the name Demas, it would dredge up the horrible memories of a man who was a fellow worker, a co-laborer, a preacher of the gospel who for some reason, when life hit him in the mouth, uh, having preached alongside of some of the greatest men of God in the Bible, is not with them today in heaven because he drew back. Demas have forsaken me having loved this present world. His name will forever be a foul stench in the kingdom of God. Demas means, you can look it up for yourself, the word Demas means popular. That's what the name means. When it was popular to preach, he was your man. When he was getting the big offerings, when his name was in the marquee, he was the keynote speaker preaching all the camp meetings. When he was getting the high fives, the handshakes, uh, and the pats on the back, he was God's man. But when it come time to be cast into the prison, when it come time to be stoned and left for dead, when it was... Uh, the Apostle Paul said, I've learned that in whatever state I'm in to be content. Uh, I, I've learned to be, you know, cold and naked and hungry and destitute. Uh, I've learned uh, to be content and satisfied doing the will of God when life is punching me in the mouth, uh, when things aren't going my way, when people are questioning me, are you sure that God loves you? Are you sure you're called? Are you really sure you should have gave up the Sanhedrin and being a Pharisee and preaching the gospel? Everywhere you turn me and are trying to kill you, everywhere I look you're being stoned or thrown into prison, you're back it's got stripes on it from being beaten. Where is your God? Where is the victory that God promised for you? It is in that same letter he told Timothy, all men have forsaken me, but nevertheless the Lord has stood by me. You can hear the 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 pain in his voice as he tells Timothy, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Yeah. People that weren't willing to remain under that heavy load with patience and say to God, I don't care what wars against my soul. I'm in this thing Unto the very end. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He that endureth. One scholar said. That that word patience. Is first cousins. With the biblical word endurance. He that endures. Unto the end. The same shall be saved. Amen. You don't make it in the city. You serve God 40 years. And backslide. In your latter years. Brother John used to always say, 
It's not what you was yesterday, honey. It's what you is today. People I've known who have drew back. I started just going through my through my own personal memory bank. And, and just like Paul did with demons, it dredges up so many painful memories. People that I know that have drawn back. I can, I can remember one family right here that God was doing a marvelous work in their life. I can remember the wife down at this altar seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God all over. I can remember one uh, of the three or four children that they had, one of the boys, uh, wanted to be a preacher. He wanted, you know, when he seen me preach, uh, he wanted to be a preacher. And he said, when I get old, I want to preach like you. I said to him, Son, if you feel called to preach, uh, it don't matter how old you are. If you come and tell me that God has, has given you a word, has spoken something to your heart, you let me know, and I'll let you get up here, and you can preach. And he said, oh, no, I got to wait till I get old like you. <laughs> he told me, I don't want to preach like the other preacher that we used to have. He said, I want to preach like you. And I said, well, what does that mean? What the, the other pre He said, the other preacher, he just talked. He said, but when you preach, he said, you get red and purple in your face. He said, when I preach, I want my face to get red and purple. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People that draw back. You want to know the reason that that family are no longer serving the Lord. We put a sign on that door. We, we put the, the new carpet and the new pews in here. We just ask, please, no food, drink, gum, or candy in here. Water's fine. Some that won't put stains all over the pews, then the carpet, water's fine. He, he used to bring those, those big 44-ounce Slurpees in here. You know? Won't drink the... I can't bring my Slurpee, I ain't coming. I said, really? Are you serious? I mean, you're serious? Yeah. If I want to bring a Slurpee in there, then I... I said, I, I don't even know what to say to that. My soul, my family, a Slurpee. Slurpee won. A Slurpee one. I can't ask five-year-olds not to not to bring a Slurpee in here when adults are bringing them in here. I know I can be a lot more hip and a lot more cool than that. I just don't like, you know, drinks and donuts in the sanctuary. I was brought up different. There's a lot of places where that's okay. But we just ask that people not do it. But it showed me something. As soon as some little bit of something hits you in the mouth, as soon as a little bit of something don't go your way, poof, I'm gone. I'm out. That's right. People I've known that have drawn back. That list is longer than I want to admit. I don't want to keep naming names or scenarios, but I can keep going. And there's no good enough reason to ever draw back. I'll tell you a better list. People I've known that never drew back. That's Hebrews chapter 11 for the apostles. As if they needed reinforcement, he drew all the way down to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 39, telling them, preaching to them, do not draw back. Yeah. Don't quit. You have need of patience that you'll inherit the promise. And then he reinforces that with a list of men and women in Hebrews chapter number 11 that refuse to quit. It's called the faith 
chapter in the Bible. Oh, yes, Lord. They refused to quit. They were fed to the lions. They were sawn asunder. They wandered destitute. And the Bible said, of whom this world was not worthy. They subdued kingdoms. They fought valiantly. They wrought victory. How? By not surrendering. Never quitting. When I think of a CD caller, he was working at the shipyard over in Pascagoula. He was underneath the hull of one of those ships from chest up, welding something, lying flat on his back, and they were one of those overhead cranes carrying a, a plate sheet of metal over the top, and something happened, and that sheet fell, and when it come down, it landed on Brother Collie from his from his hip bones down, and, and it did what you would think it would do. It it pulverized him. It smushed his lower half flat as a pancake. His bones were like shattered glass. And Brother Tim said the doctors told. Sister Collie, that, that you, you can't put him back together. There's just there's nothing to work with. He's crushed like shattered glass. He's crushed like powder. He, he can't get well. There, there's no over in this. We don't know what to do for him. And that church bound together and prayed and fasted for that man of God and God Put those bones back together. God recovered that man of God. Do you know, you, you, you may not ever notice, but he, he walked just a little bit funny. He, he walked just with a, a little bit of a, of, of a misstep and with a, a limp, so to speak. But you would never know the fact that he's alive and the very fact that he's walking and not totally disabled is the fact that God keeps his promises. Yeah. Yeah. People that get hit in the mouth and say it don't matter, live or die, I'm going to believe God. If I die, I'll die in faith knowing that God is a healer. Those are the kind of people that get healed. There's a long list of people, many of which I can tell you are seated right in here. People who refuse to quit. People who refuse to give up. People who refuse to draw back. I want to tell you the man in office today is not there by my vote. I'm not sure he's there by anybody's vote. But if the devil thinks that it's going to make the church draw back or quit, if $10 a gallon gasoline winds up being the case and, that, and, and that's our lot and we can't even afford to get in a vehicle and, and go to church, and you looking at a man, that'll be a circuit rider. I'll come to where you are. I'll turn into one of them. If, if a Mormon can ride a 10 speed everywhere, so can I. They walked everywhere in the Bible. Jesus walked everywhere he went. They walked everywhere they went in the Bible and turned the world upside down for God. You think ten dollar a gallon gasoline is gonna cause the church to draw back? Uh, you better think again, devil, because there's some people that aren't going to quit, no matter what. It comes down to it: the church that was born in the Book of Acts, chapter two, that shared all things in common, 
What I have is yours. If I've got something to eat, then so do you. If I've got somewhere to live, then so do you. We're going to make it to the city. We're going to live for God until the trumpet sounds. We're going to believe God's promises are in Christ, yes, and also in Him, amen. But I can't help but believe that if somebody here or there's somebody that's watching this service this morning online that was fighting your mind, if it's hitting you right in the one problem, one trial, one difficulty after another. The Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, I want you to preach and tell them there's no excuse, not one, not anything you or whatever good that condone the words. Amen. God will never make an excuse for you to say, I give up. There's no temptation. The word temptation means test or try. There's no temptation taking you but that which is common. God will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape you be able to endure it. Jesus is your way of escape. Jesus is our, Jesus is our endurance. Remain steadfast. We will. Endure. He said we say. God's word were out to be true. God's never told a lie. Father, with your word today. I thank you, Lord God. You love us enough to encourage us just to stay. Just to remain, even if it means to remain underneath a heavy load. To remain to walk in a hard way. Your promise is still amen in Christ. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You're still the Savior for our losses. You're still the healer of all of our infirmities and all of our diseases. You're a God of victory, a God of triumph, a God who will pour out his spirit and give revival, bring victory. A God who still is able to fill us with joy and peace and love. And with a God who is still promised days are yet. God, I pray to them. You'll pour into our spirit God of your spirit, that of us patience, that will us endurance, that will put in us as soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can walk a good warfare for Jesus Christ. That we'll be good soldiers for the Lord's treat. There's no compromise. There's no drawing back, no recoil in the child of God. I go forward. I want to advance. I want to do the will of God. And I want to bless us as we're up this morning and be faced again. I pray for one Lord that's lost that you'd save them. That one that needs in their body that they're healing today. I've heard some glorious tellings just here in the past of your power. Healing virtue. So thankful. Do it. I pray Lord for the one that's in a battle of spiritual life at home, in their marriage, their finances. I pray you're a haymaker this morning. I pray, oh God, just open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing and be able to contain all. Make a way for today, oh God. Speak peace over the troubled waters in their life. I pray, oh God, come walk in the storm of certain destruction and sure disaster. You would shield their refuge today. As many as we are, let's find us a place in the altar this morning. Let's go to the Lord, let's soar. I'm out of them that will draw back. No matter what I will, I intend whole, whole heart.